Hi there, welcome to another video for Leave Insert Ordinary Level Maths. We're going to start a new topic today, arithmetic. So the first thing we need to look at in arithmetic is all about income tax. Income tax, PRSI, USC, these are all things that you'll be familiar with if you have a part-time job. So it's very important that we understand how income tax is calculated, as if you just are trusting someone to do it for you, you could quite easily end up on emergency tax where you're paying too much, or you could be opening yourself up to be taken advantage of. So even having a basic understanding of it is very important. And it's something that applies to everyone. Before we begin into income tax, we'll do a quick recap of decimals, percentages, and fractions. If I have 40%, if I wanted to write that as a fraction, it would be 40 over 100, 40 out of 140%. And as a decimal then, that would be 0.4. 7% as a fraction will be 7 out of 100, or as a decimal, it'll be 0 0.07. So that's 7% not to be mixed up with 70%, which will be 0 0.7. Two very different things. 115%, so if it's more than 100%, well, that'll be 115 over 100, or as a decimal, that could be written as one whole unit, 0.15. That'll be 115%, so greater than the amount you started with. So if you started with 100% and you increased it by 15%, you'd have 115%. Finding a percentage of an amount. So if you want to find 35% of 380, so if you multiply 380 by 0 0.35, it'll give you 133. So if you convert the, the percentage into a decimal and multiply it, it's nearly the fastest way possible. You can use your calculator and put in the percentage sign. So just be careful that you're putting in 35, then the percentage button. You're not putting it in as a decimal with a percentage button because pick one system or the other. Increasing or decreasing an amount by a percentage. So the original quantity that you start with is said to be 100%. So whatever amount you start with, that's 100. And then if you want to increase it by 5%, you'd go to 105%. Or if you wanted to reduce it by 20%, you'd come down to 80%. So here's an example where Jack's salary of 45,000 is increased by 5%. Find his new salary. So 45,000 is his 100%, his starting amount, and we want to increase it by 5%. So that means his new salary is going to be 105%. So 105% as a decimal is 1%. 0.05. You put that into your calculator, and he's going to be making 47,250. And include your units on that, that's in euros. So that's the answer to that question. 8% of a sum of money is 24.40. Find the sum of money. Okay, so we know that 8% of it is that much. So in order to find 100%, we'd start from 8% is 24.40. Let's go down and find 1%. So 1% is going to be 24.40 divided by 8, which is 3.05. So that's 1%. And now to go from 1% up to 100%, we'll multiply both sides by 100. So this is going to be 305. So 100% the full amount would be 305 and 8% would be 2440. An alternative method of doing that is if you had the 2440, and we know that that's 8%. To go back to 100%, instead of multiplying by 0 0.08, if we were to divide by 0 0.08, that would bring us back up to 100%. So that would mean that 305 is 100%. So either way, you might have done it one way previously, or you might have done it a different way. Either is acceptable once you're getting there. Then on to actual income tax then. So in Ireland, there are two rates of income tax. There's the standard rate, which is about 20%, and then there's what's called the higher rate, which is about 40%. And these rates can be changed in the budget each year. So the government sets the rates that you have to pay tax on. You will be paying the standard rate up until a certain point, and then any money you earn over that 
will be taxed at a higher rate. So the more money you make, the more money that's going to get taxed at the higher rate. The standard rate cutoff point is the amount up to which the standard rate is taxed at. And then any income earned above this point is charged at the higher rate of tax. So if you can imagine it here, all this yellow box, that's all your money up as far as, let's say, 30,000. So there's 30,000 euro in here, and that's getting taxed at 20%. So you have to pay 20% tax on all that. And if you're earning a total of 50,000 altogether, that means you're earning 20,000 above this point. So you're earning 20,000 up here, and that's going to get taxed at 40%. And you add those two taxes together, and that'll give you your total tax bill. So 30,000 will get taxed at 20%, and 20,000 will get taxed at 40%. Notice how it's not the full 50,000 getting taxed. It's broken up into the standard rate and the higher rate. Tax credits, then, are a thing which everyone is assigned, and they reduce the amount of tax you need to pay. So you might get tax credits for things like if you have expenses or if you're claiming back tax on things, they might assign you credits. They're good. You want to increase your credits in order to decrease the amount of tax you have to pay. Credit is good. Gross tax is the total amount of tax a taxpayer owes to the state. So that's the total amount of tax before any credits are applied or any deductions or anything like that. So that's the total tax bill. And then your tax payable is the actual tax bill at the end that you need to pay the government. So your tax payable is your gross tax, take away your tax credits. And whatever's left over is the amount that you have to pay. If you look at this pie chart here, your gross pay is the whole lot. And then if you take out your deductions, you're left with your net pay. So gross income is the total income earned before any tax. And then your net income is how much money you get to take home with you. So gross is before, net is after. Net is what you come home with. In the first example here, Paul earns an annual salary of €42,000. He has a standard rate cutoff point of €30,000 and tax credits of 1250 If the standard rate is 20% and the higher rate is 40%, calculate his tax payable. So he's going to be paying 20% on his first 30,000. And then because he's earning 42,000, that means there's 12,000 that's going to be in the higher tax bracket because the 30 and the 12 add up to 42. So 30,000 at 20% and then the 12,000 is going to be taxed at the higher percent, which is 40. So let's calculate that first. His first 30,000 get 20% of that and it gives us 6,000. So he's paying 6,000 euro from the first 30%. So that's the bottom part of the graph here. And then the 12,000 12, euro that's getting taxed at 40%, well, 12,000 times 40% is 4,800. So that's how much tax he's paying for that top part. So you can see how once you start earning over a certain amount, you're getting taxed quite heavily on it. So it can be, sometimes people will try and keep below that point so that they don't get taxed as much. Gross tax then is total amount of tax payable is 6,000 plus 4,800. So the total tax bill is 10,800 euro. But he has to apply his tax credits now. So his tax credits are going to bring that amount of tax down so he doesn't have to pay the full 10,800. And he has 1,250 in tax credits. So we take that away from the gross tax, which leaves him a total tax bill to pay of 9,550 euro. To find out how much money he gets to bring home with him, his net income, we're going to take that 9,550 away from his salary. And his salary that he earned was 42,000 euro. So 42,000 take away 9,550 means he gets a net income, a home income that he brings home 32,450 euro. And that's how income tax works. There's a second example here, okay, that you can have a go at yourself, and I'll have these completed up on the notes that you can compare it to. But first, quickly, I want to talk about some other deductions. So we have USC and we have PRSI. 
USC stands for the Universal Social Charge, and that was brought in back in 2008 when the banks collapsed. So the government had no money, they needed to do what's called broaden the tax base. So they needed to tax more people because what they were doing was they were taxing like wealthy people and not taxing everybody. So very few people were paying tax, but they were paying a lot of tax. So then they needed to broaden it. So they needed to put on a small tax onto everybody. And that's called the USC. Basically, it's just an added tax. It doesn't get used for anything. It's just to generate money for the state. People were not happy when that came in. So this is charged on gross income over 13,000 euro. So every anything you earn over 13,000 euro is going to get taxed with USC. So let's say if you have a summer job and you're not earning over 13,000, you won't have to pay any USC. And the different rates are here, but again, these change in the budget. So these are the per week. So, well, per year and per week. So if you earn up to 230 euro per week, you will be earning, you will be paying 0.5% on any earnings up to that. Once you go over that and you're going from 231 euro and one cent up to 382 and 19 cent, that amount of money is getting taxed at 2%. Anything you earn between 382 and 1347 a week is getting taxed at 4.5%. And if you're earning anything over that, it's getting taxed at 8% at USC. This is in addition to your income tax. So you're paying income tax and your USC and you'll be paying PRSI and you know you might be paying into a pension and you might be paying off your car loan and all those things. They can all be deducted at source straight out of your paycheck. You don't get a choice. So that's, you'll have to go through the different brands step by step to work out the USC. And then the PRSI is 4% of your gross salary if it's above 18,000 euro. So again, if you're not earning 18,000 euro in the year, you won't be paying any PRSI. The PRSI also depends on what class you're in. Most people are in PRSI class A, but if you're maybe like, uh, you have your own business or things, you might be in a different class, or if you're in a, work in a certain section of the economy, you might have to be in a different class of PRSI. This is used to pay for like social welfare, child benefit, pensions, things like that. Like, so it's called pay related social insurance. So it pays for kind of social things. And uh, you can also use your PRSI to get like dental appointments and go to the opticians and things like that. But you need to build up a good bit of PRSI before you can do that. So you need to be working about three, four years full time in order to get those benefits. But then you get to use them every year. So here's an example where Sam earns 38,600 euro per year. Calculate the total USC and PRSI deductions on her salary per year. So again, these will be in addition to her income tax. USC is calculated as follows. So the 12,012 is taxed at 5%. So that's 60 euro that she's paying on that. Then between the 12,012 euro and the 19,874, that's getting taxed at 2%. So that means that that 7,826 is getting taxed at 2% meaning that's another bit of tax of 157.24. And then she's earning between the 19,874 and the 38,600. That's getting taxed at 4.5%. So that's another 842 euro in tax. And when you add all that up, she has a total USC bill of 1,059.97. So that's her USC. And that's from her gross tax. Again, you go to gross tax, and now you need to calculate the PRSI. So this is from the total again, from 38,600. You're working from that the whole time. Divided by 52, so this is going to be per week. So she's earning 742.31 a week. This is three, over 352. So she's subject to the 4% PRSI. So she is earning enough money to be getting PRSI. Get 4% of her total income, that is 1,544. So her PRSI is 1,544, 4% of her income. Adding that to her USC bill means she's paying a total of 2,603.97 in PRSI and USC. And she'll definitely have some other deductions as well. So, you know, you pay a lot of tax over the year, but it funds all those essential services like roads, guards, hospitals, schools, it keeps the country moving. 
So that's income tax. I hope you found that useful.